If you look down upon a city with the widest bird's eye view, you might wonder how it functions. Who takes care of me and you? Who makes sure there's food for vegans and for carnivores as well? It seems like there's a wizard who has cast a magic spell. Just think of one small part. Who makes sure there's so much bread? You want rice, you want ciabatta, or make it sourdough instead? A baguette or a croissant? It doesn't matter, don't you see? You get yours and she gets hers and I get mine. How can that be? One's buying a dozen bagels to grace an impromptu brunch. One's using food stamps for a simple loaf to make her children lunch. No matter the amount we require, no matter the choices we make, an army of workers has mobilized to fashion the bread we partake. The farmer who grows the wheat, the miller who grinds the flour, the baker and all the others who work hour after hour, they're all on their own, each one making independent decisions. But somehow their plans fit together with the greatest degree of precision. So there must be a czar of wheat and flour, of trucks and of bread and yeast to allocate and oversee and plan at the very least for the unexpected change. What if today's not like yesterday? It never is though, is it? So who keeps chaos away? Because there's order all around us. Things look as if they're planned, like the supply of bread in a city enough to match up with demand. And though flour is used for more than just bread, we never have to fight over where it goes and who gets what. So why do we sleep so well at night, knowing nobody's in charge? It looks like all is left to chance. Yet in New York or London, as well as Paris, France, no one's worried the shelves will be empty. We take supply for granted. But it's a marvel, it's a miracle. The world's somehow enchanted. Of course, the result's never perfect, but the system's organic, alive. Over time, fewer people go hungry, and more and more bread lovers thrive. And if you're allergic to gluten, there are sellers who work for you, too. Your choices expand, and what you demand is created and waiting for you. I have my tastes, and you have yours. We each have our own urges, yet somehow there's no conflict. A harmony emerges. Our dreams can fit together like a quilt that someone weaves us. But there isn't a weaver of dreams. Reality deceives us. And here's the crazy thing. If someone really were in charge to make sure that bread was plentiful with the power to enlarge the supply of flour and yeast and of bakers and ovens too, would that person with that power have any idea of what to do? Could a minister of bread do even half as well? Would there be enough of every kind of bread upon the shelves? How could he know how much to make of each kind every day? There'd be shortages and surpluses and waste and much dismay. You might think the job is easy. If the top sellers rye, then for every variety, push production up that high. Then no one's disappointed. Bread eaters will rejoice when they see that every bakery is filled with so much choice. Bread eaters, yes, but help. The forgotten pizza lover cries, all the flour's gone to baking bread. There's none left for the pies of pepperoni, deep dish, thin crust and Sicilian. You've solved the bread challenge, yes, but created another million problems. No problem, we'll just grow lots more wheat. But that means less of something else that people like to eat which only makes the puzzle of the harmony around us much more puzzling. This order, this peace has to astound us. So many things we count on, yet no one's behind the curtain. No wizard, no controls, yet the supply of stuff near certain. Every morning, the bakers rise early to make sure your bread is fresh. And the world gets more complicated, but the plans just continue to mesh. Every morning the bakers rise early, but not under anyone's command. Where in the anatomy textbooks can I view an invisible hand? The key to the process is prices and the freedom to shop where you want. Competition among all the bakers. Make sure that they rise before dawn to make sure the bread's near perfection. 
to make sure that the buyer's content. You don't have to know economics to know when your money's well spent. We know there's order built into the fabric of the world of nature. Flocks of geese, schools of fish, and every boy and girl delights in how the stars shine down in all their constellations, and the planets stay on track and keep the most sublime relations with each other. Orders everywhere, yet we humans too create it. It emerges. No one intends it. No one has to orchestrate it. It's the product of our actions, but no single minds designed it. There's magic without wizards, if you just know how to find it.